Hi guys, well we're going to do another example um, pretty similar to the one we did in class where we were looking at the distance from a point to a plane. Now this time we're going to do something similar. What we're going to do this time is we want to know the distance instead of from a point to a plane we want to know the distance between two parallel planes. So if two planes are parallel, let's take their linear equations what that means is they have normals that are in the same direction so you can write them like this. If your two planes aren't quite in that format, you can always just divide by an appropriate number to make sure that the normals are exactly the same for both planes. So what does this look like in space? Well, if we draw a picture, you have... Um, so here's one of my planes. And we've got another one. Let's say it's behind it. There it goes. What we want to know is the distance between them. Okay, so one way to do this, there are others, if you look in Stuart he does it quite a different way. Start at the origin and draw a line in the same direction as the normal. Okay, so imagine this line shooting out here and it's oriented with the normal to these planes. Okay, so we have this thing coming in at right angles. So we're going to write the vector parametric equation for this line and it's simply r of t is equal to the normal times t. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to write it slightly differently. I'm going to instead say it's equal to t times a unit vector in the direction of the normal. Now the reason for doing this is because this unit vector here, n over length n, has length of 1. Which means that if I take any point on this line, the length of this vector, or of this point from the or distance of this point from the origin, is just going to be t. Okay, so we can write that down as well. So the length, therefore, at for, for a given value of t, just equals t absolute value. Okay, because the length of this one is just equal to 1. I mean, whenever we take a scalar outside of a length, we always take the absolute value. Okay, taking the length of a vector will always give us uh, a number. Okay, so what we've got here is the situation where the distance I've gone along my line is basically just equal to t. If we only go in positive t, then we're heading along this line. Um, we cut through plane 1, let's say at t1. Um, and then we keep going a bit further. We cut through plane 2 at t2. So the distance between the two planes is just going to be the absolute value of T2 minus T1. Okay, so let's say you've gone 10 units along to get to plane 1, and you stop here, and then you go 12 units from 0 to plane 2, then the distance between them is going to be 2, which is equal to 12 minus 10. Okay, and just to take into account the fact that we might be going backwards and might get a negative number, we'll take the absolute value. Alright, so let's see what we can make of this. Um, we'll get a fresh page. So we've got our equation r equals t times n hat, and I'll now write this in terms of the components. Okay, it's going to be 1 over the length of the normal, so 1 over square root a squared plus b squared plus c squared times t a t b t c. Okay, and that's just my x, y, and z components along that line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick those x, y's, and z's back into my plane equations. Let's, ta let's take the first one. So we had ax plus by plus cz plus d1 
equals zero. I'm going to stick these expressions for x, y, and z. I'm going to fire them into this equation here. That y is going to go in here, and that z is going to go in here. So what am I going to get? Well, let's see. I'm going to get a t times a. The whole thing is going to be divided by that square root thingy. So I'm going to have a squared t plus b squared t plus c squared t all over the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared and plus d1 equals zero. Okay, let's just reorganize that slightly. Um, we're going to have a squared plus b squared plus c squared all over the square root of that all times t plus d1 equals zero and something squared divided by or something divided by its square root is just equal to its square root so that's going to be square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared times t plus d1 equals zero okay um, then I'll just solve that for t because remember that the difference between these two t values in fact I'll call this t1 because it's the t value for my first plane so t1 is going to be therefore just equal to negative d1 over the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared then t2 by exactly the same logic is going to be negative d2 over the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So our distance between the planes is the absolute value of t2 minus t1 which equals the absolute value of d2 minus d1 all over the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Okay, so given the two linear formulae for two parallel planes, so long as you scale the equations so they both have the same a, b, and c, you can just apply this formula to get the distance between them. So let's illustrate that with a quick, with a quick example. So let's say I've got planes um, x plus 2y plus z plus 6 equals 0. And let's say I've got a scaled version, so negative 2x... Um, minus 4y minus 2z um, plus 1 equals 0. I don't want plus 1, let's have plus 2 equals 0. Now before I can apply the formula I just had, I have to rewrite these two equations so they both have the same normal. You can see that they're parallel. Um, they're both the normals 1, 2, 1 and negative 2, negative 4, negative 2 are scalar multiples of each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide that second equation by 2. So this one is equivalent to saying x dividing it by negative 2 plus 2y plus z minus 1 equals 0. Alright, so we have a, b, c is equal to 1, 2, 1. We've got d1 equals 6, that's just come from here. And we've got d2 equals negative 1. Okay, that's come from here. Right, so the distance between these planes is simply then the absolute value of d2 minus d1 over square root a squared plus b squared plus c squared which is equal to let's see absolute value of negative 1 minus 6 it's going to be a 7 divided by the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared which boils down to be 7 over root 6 okay and that's all there is to it